Bruh, we gotta talk about this right now, cause not even, I I'm heated. I'm heated. Roll it. How? Like, like, ju like just how does The Weeknd not get nominated for a single category? And I'm not even saying this as a Weeknd fan. Obviously, I'm a diehard XO till we overdose, yada, 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 like Weeknd fan. But just as like a lover of music, as someone who saw the entire musical landscape over the last year, how do you deny The Weeknd and After Hours as an album? How do you deny it a single fucking nomination? Even if you're not a fan of The Weeknd, even if you're not someone who like listens to his music or doesn't care to get into like the conceptual idea that is After Hours and wearing the same jacket and the bandages, even if you're not someone who dives that deep into music in general, even if you are the casual music listener, you have heard The Weeknd and After Hours and Blinding Lights and you've just, and you've seen the awards that he's won on other, like literally just the AMAs like yesterday. You're about to tell me that Coldplay, who has not put out really any kind of significant music in the last, I don't know, like at least couple of years. They have not been as big as they have been in past years. You're gonna tell me that Coldplay's album is more deserving of a nomination for album of the year than After Hours, which which like, which was the number one album, which broke streaming records, which Blinding Lights was like number one on, on basically every chart that exists for like, for quite some time. You're gonna tell me that Coldplay's album deserves to be on the album of the year list more so than After Hours. Even the albums that are here that are worthy of being on there, they're not any more worthy than After Hours. Like Hollywood's Bleeding by Post Malone, like, it's a solid album. I don't personally think it's his best album. I think his debut and then Beer Bongs and Bentleys, I think that those two albums are better than Hollywood's Bleeding, but that's because I prefer a certain type of sound from Post Malone. Like, I prefer, this, this seemed to be a little more poppy, but even if it's not my favorite album, I can understand why it's on there. Folklore, obviously, Taylor Swift just smashes records, but you're not about to tell me that Taylor Swift is, has a more diehard or a more popular or, or is a bigger artist than The Weeknd is currently. Janae Aiko, that's also a solid album she that that album was pretty solid through and through in terms of like even even the even the features that she has on it the 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 vibe of the album she grows as an artist but she can only grow so far because her sound is very uniquely hers like she she can't not that she can't just over her albums from the very first one all the way up until now the sound has slightly evolved but you still it still has that classic Janae Aiko sound to it where The Weeknd has definitely from from the trilogy all the way up until now, like every album has sounded on its own. The trilogy sounds like mixtape Weeknd. Then we had Beauty Behind the Madness, which is the one that kind of put him on the map as a star. He won all the Grammys that year for it. That has its own like very pop driven sound. And then Starboy is, is obviously very party heavy music. And then now we have this one, which is a very, which is a whole cinematic storyline with After Hours. Like there has been more artistic growth, but that's just because Janae, she, she kind of, her music kind of limits what it is. And I didn't really listen to Dua Lipa's, you know, album Future Nostalgia. I didn't listen to the other two either that are on here, you know, and, and I'm sure they're deserving in their own right, but you're not about to try to convince me After Hours wasn't deserving of album of the year. You're also not about to try to convince me that Blinding Lights doesn't deserve to be on the song or the record of the year either, which it's not because once again, zero nominations. Yeah, we had Say So by Doja Cat, obviously very popular, but that's more like TikTok popular. That's kind of what made the whole song pop off in general it's an amazing song i fuck with the vibe but it is not it is not it's deserving to be on record of the year but again not any more deserving than than blinding lights which is by far that song right there is the reason why the weekend is performing at the halftime show in Super Bowl because that one track. Everybody from my 50 year old parents all the way down to my 15 year old like, you know, nieces and nephews, everybody fucks with that song. Obviously Beyonce is gonna be nominated for Black Parade and it's not even necessarily because of the song, it's more just because of the political environment that we have right now. You put a politically charged song out there or you put a song that's, that's rebelling against what seems to be commonplace, you're gonna get some Grammy nods just because of the fact that, that you're making a song that's empowering an entire race basically. Now, will it win record of the year? I personally don't believe it's deserving of record of the year, and that might get me canceled. That might have people heated. How you, how, who are you to touch on black topics when you're not, I don't give a fuck. You know, I understand the importance of the message and everything and I fuck with it, but is it record of the year? No, it takes more than just the song. It takes more than just the lyrics to be a, to be record of the year. Sonically, as an overall record, I don't believe it deserves to be 
it deserves to be record of the year. Colors by Black Pumas, that's probably one of the ones that's deserving of record of the year sound wise. When I think of record of the year, I think of like, is this going to be long lasting? Is this something that will... Is this something that will transcend longer than just the 2021 Grammys? And when I think about that, it's gonna be colors for me. Now, song of the year, again, another nod to Beyonce, which again is going to be something that, that you expect, but the box, pfft, Anybody remember how big the box was when that track came out? That that literally made Roddy Rich a star. Cardigan, Taylor Swift is always gonna get a nod for song of the year whenever she puts out an album. I'm, I'm not really, there, I, there are some good ones here, but again, you're not gonna convince me that any of these tracks were any more, any more deserving than Blinding Lights. Blinding Lights had and still has that like sound to it that everybody can love, that you notice right when you hear it. You're not gonna, I, I can't go to my dad and, and say, Dad, do you have you heard The Box by Roddy Rich? I can't go to my mom and be like, have you heard Black Parade by, by Beyonce? I can't go to my cousin, have you heard Cardigan by Taylor Swift? But I can go to all of those people who are not diehard EXO fans, who aren't even diehard Weekend fans, I would say, just casual music listeners, and I'm gonna say, have you heard of Blinding Lights? And the answer is gonna be yes. I don't. I, I just don't know how After Hours and The Weeknd was was snubbed like this. Now I will say the on, the one category that I completely 100% agree with, and the category that that the Grammys has finally gotten right after so many years. It's been so many years that I'm like, who the fuck? Why, why are they up here? Well, why is this even on this list? And that is gonna be for Best Rap Album. People are not gonna necessarily agree with this list because this list is more like pure hip hop. Your, your everyday mid 20s, early 20s listener, they're not going to be fucking with pretty much anybody on this list, but there's nobody on this list or there's nobody missing from this list who had albums that were as good, especially when you consider quote unquote rappers like lyricists, like lyrical ability talent wise. There's nobody missing from this list and there's nobody on this list that should not be there. All five of these, D Smoke, Freddie Gibbs, J Electronica, Nas, and Royce the Five Nine, all deserving. J Electronica finally fucking dropped his album after all of these years, and I don't want to see that one win. J Electronica is mad talented. He's a he's a hell of a good MC and 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 a good rapper. But one, it's been it was a long-awaited album, and then two, it finally drops, and then Jay Z is basically on every single track. That watered down the album for me. It gave me a bad taste in my mouth. I, like I haven't listened to that album. I haven't listened to that album since the first or second time, or maybe three times hearing it through just to see what the vibe was and see if I was fucking with it. I was, but again, Jay Z just fucked all that up for me. Like I wanted, I had been waiting ten years for Jay Electronica to drop a solo project, and then Jay Z's on every fucking song. You know, but clearly, clearly the winner of this, and, and if he doesn't win, I'm gonna be fucking pissed, and I'm gonna be like, besides myself, is Freddie Gibbs and The Alchemist with Alfredo. That album is the best rap album that I have heard, not only this year, but also maybe maybe last year as well. The allegory is fire as well, and it kind of had like Royce seen like his comeback. Obviously, the Book of Ryan was solid. The Book of Ryan was kind of like a conceptual album. This is more like a, a, a traditional album in terms of what Royce the Five Nine put out, and it was fire. I fucked with it, but Alfredo just has that. It has that quality to it that should be deserving of best rap album. Super impressed with the best rap album category, no doubt. The fact that the people going up there and are, that are going to be reading these nominations, no one's going to even know who these people are, and that's a good thing in rap because that means that these rappers the list is not mainstream the list is for diehard rap fans and that's what we got here but yeah man that's it i just really wanted to to express my disdain and my like the bad taste in my mouth that the grammys gives me whenever they do things like this by leaving the weekend off of any category they didn't even if it's not album of the year that's fine but fucking song of the year the statistics back up the the fact that it should be nominated for song of the year like these type of snubs are what are is what makes is what makes people feel like the grammy nominations are no longer like they don't mean anything in music anymore because it's too politically there's too much going on behind the scenes it's not really about the music it's more about the political back like back alley type of things that happen in order to get these nominations but yeah man other than that those are really the things oh k-pop you know bts got nominated for best duo or best group with dynamite that should have been there as well but that also should have maybe been on song of the year because of the sheer numbers that it did but other than that yeah i just wanted to talk about i wanted to talk about the snub that was not having the weekend on any single fucking category and i also wanted to say that finally we got an extremely good list for album of the year. But that's it, that's all that I wanted to say. I appreciate everybody's time and we go back to normal, our normal scheduled videos that we have with reactions and things like that next video. Appreciate y'all. Peace.